Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rentway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for Monday, February 13th, 2023. Well, we kind of finished out the week with a little bit of uncertainty, maybe a little bit of profit taking that did relieve some of the overbought conditions in the market. But the reason that has occurred is because we have a pretty uncertain week ahead with some very big ec economic data coming our way. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Monday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again everyone and thanks so much for being here today. I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a peek at these charts and see if we can figure out how we might want to approach the market for today. Well honestly today is going to be maybe just a bit of an uncertain day as we wait on a CPI number coming Tuesday morning. But let's take a look at these charts and see if they can help us out and decide what we might want to do. First off if we look at the diamonds we want to note that the diamonds has been kind of stuck in a uh, trading range here in the chart, making, well, just an awful lot of big price moves happening um, in that chart. As a matter of fact, if I go to the Dow, and we just kind of measure from those highs to the lows of that range, you'll notice that we're about an 800 point range. Um, in that consolidating swing that's we've just been bouncing back and forth making for a pretty darn dangerous situation here in the diamonds and a high risk situation now what does that mean for this week well i think with the big data that we have coming this week on economic reports anything is possible so if we have those bulls find inspiration here i would not rule out the possibility that we could push right back up here to those highs and of course if they can push through there well you'll notice that we have these upside targets right up in here that we could reach now you will want to remember that this is a pretty substantial resistance area overall in the chart as we can uh, continue to try to push higher here now if the bears find inspiration of course catching this support down here would be very key um, we wouldn't want to see this break because if this breaks then we're likely going to be testing some of these levels down in here on the chart, which would make for uh, probably some uncomfortable conditions out there, particularly if you um, have been buying up strongly uh, in hopes uh, of, of more rally. So watch that closely. Now, if we look, this is kind of the uncertain index right now. If we look at the SPY, SPY continues in this bullish move. And you'll notice in here this trend that we could be um, showing in this chart. Now I'm going to remove this red line at this point because we've certainly broken above that area here. And that was that concerning area of the chart. Now it's going to be the critical point is will we hold above that area. Now looking at this trend, I'm going to have to move this over here and just steepen that trend up just a little bit um, in that chart to show what we have going here in the SPY. So looking at this condition right in here and looking at that opportunity that we might be catching a little bit of price support in here there's no way to look at this chart and not see quite a bit of bullishness here so watch for that opportunity if that CPI number is a good number then we could certainly see this market continue to push on through to the upside and I would put targets up here these are big point moves targets up here around these these tops that we saw last week so kind of keep an eye on that if for some reason the the number is not good and the bears engage well a push down here to this support would be pretty critical if that were to fail in that area then i would suggest then we're going to look a little bit lower here and we may actually give up that trend here in the chart 
if that were to occur. So if you're a bull, fingers crossed that we hold on here. If you're a bear, well, I, I would say you're you're wanting to see the opposite occur here in the market. So um, we're gonna have to stay on our toes here um, in this market. Now, one of the good news things, and we'll look at just a little bit, is that we have relieved some of that overbought pressure here in these indexes. Unfortunately, we are still very elevated above our 50-day moving average here, which does kind of give us that that little bit of a pause um, perhaps the data can push us on beyond that but you can see there still is that real potential that we may have to come back or rest for a while to allow that 50-day moving average to catch up let's take a look at our QQQ QQQ still remains the most bullish index in the market. And if I extend this trend on out, you can see we're reaching that point where we're trying to hold on to, um, to that trend um, here on Friday with that uh, Thursday and Friday with that little bit of a bounce. There's our support level in the chart. So if those bulls can engage, then we would look maybe for a press back up here. There's a little resistance right in that pattern right there and if we can push through these are big point moves again we push back up here maybe test some of these highs that we saw last week and keeping in mind there are some significant price resistance levels in that chart on QQQ and QQQ remains at this point the most uh, bullish in the market and probably the most extended uh, still notice how far away we are from our 50-day moving average um, and we're still waiting for that 50 to cross up through the 200 so we're pretty stretched out here on that index and then if we take a look at our IWM IWM also remains bullish here in the chart unfortunately we've got a little bit of a problem here as we kind of slipped out from underneath that upside trend now i would say that upside trend was pretty darn steep here in that chart so if we were to draw that line up through there like we've got done on the other indexes draw that line up there and we'll turn it green here just real quick and make it kind of a nice fat line in there so as you can see um, we may have slipped that trend here just a little bit, but we've got a nice level of price support right in here. And you can see we did respond bullishly to that um, at the end of last week, trying to push back up. So I think the question is going to be um, if those bulls uh, gain a, a foothold here and push us on higher. Well, you can see over here, we've got some price resistance in that chart um, out in this area. So let's look for some levels right in here about the middle of that range. If we can push through there, then maybe up into here. And then again, these are really big price moves, but then all the way back up here could be possible. If those bears find that inspiration, well, I, there's not a whole lot of choices here um, in this chart. You can see we've got a little teeny tiny price support right there off of that low. But if that doesn't hold, I'm thinking we're coming down here fairly significantly in that charting and giving up that trend. So watch that close. Now you always want to remember when a trend has been broken, there's always that possibility we could rally back up to that resistance of that trend somewhere in here and then still find that lower high beginning a bit of a downtrend to come back and test some support. And there may be some reason for that just seeing how far we are still extended away from that 50 day moving average. But the good news is uh, like on the SPY, that 50 has crossed up through the 200 and that's what they call the golden cross. Let's take a look at our VIX. Well, our VIX on Friday was a little bit of, of a mix. We started out the day relatively fearful. We broke through that downtrend here in the chart. And as I suggested, um, there was that chance that um, after we pop through there that we would pull back and rest uh, in that chart. So the critical thing here, I think, on IW or the VIX is now breaking through that downtrend is whether or not we're going to hold 
that downtrend as a support. If we were to hold that downtrend as support and find a little bit of an uptrend, a little fear coming into the market, that could be a problem for us. But honestly, it's not so bad at this point that I think if we get a good CPI number, we could easily be right back down here uh, testing these lows. So keep an eye on that um, in the chart. I don't think anything gets really ugly here in the market unless we were to kind of break above some of that resistance area there and hold. And so far there is no signs that the bulls are willing to give up and allow that to occur. So I don't think there's a major worry about it at the moment. If we take a look at our T2122. Our T2122 has been one of the concerns that we've had out there. Just an overbought condition for sure in the market but we re we relieved an awful lot of that pressure on thursday with that big drawdown here in that chart and with that drawdown we also um, caught that little bit of a bounce on Friday pushing us back up and we're right here in that mid range of T2122. So remember T2122 doesn't tell us which way the market's going to go. What it does do is tell us when we're kind of in an overextended condition on either side. What we're seeing here today is uh, we're kind of setting right here in the middle. We're straddling the fence. And that's understandable considering that CPI number coming out Tuesday morning. So if I, I, I think there's a very good chance that we could have a light choppy day today as we wait for that uncertainty of what comes next in that CPI number. And you will want to well, we'll talk about that in just a second. But um, so if those bulls can push on through here, notice we've got a significant upside opportunity here if we can find reason for bullishness. And if we can find reason for bearishness, we've got about an equal opportunity to the downside. So here again, we're just kind of straddling the fence trying to decide what comes next. If we take a look at our T2108, now T20, whoops, T2108 relieved some of that pressure here, and I've been mentioning this in the chart, that our T2108 being up in here is a very rare circumstance for the market. You can see going all the way back here into 2017, it's rare when we push through and hold that much bullishness in the market. Um, typically, when we pop through there, we look for fairly significant pullbacks in the market. But what we did get a little bit is we got a little relief here last week and that pulled back. And notice we came down in here into these peaks right here. and We caught a little bit of a price support level and bounced back up. So the question is going to be with these numbers coming the, our way this week is can we continue to extend this bullishness and really stretch us out into an extreme overbought condition in the short term and I just don't know so watch that carefully just realizing that we are pretty darn extended um, still here in our um, overall in our indexes and if we look at our T2107 the same thing is is the case here 60% of our socks holding above our 200 day and noticing in here that in this area here um, all the way back to 2017, it was very rare. We saw a peak over here um, in, in uh, the end of our um, bull run in 2021, we were up above there. But it's a rare thing to see us stretch this rubber band much tighter than where we are. Now, although we relieved some of that pressure here last week, um, that gives us some room to move back up into this area here. Just kind of keep in mind the, the overall bullish extension that we've got going on in this market. And it may be difficult, um, even with real good economic data, to push us a whole lot higher here without a bit of a consolidation or a rest. Our uh, T2101, well, we um, continued to chop here. Notice that um, last week, just about every day, we had a reversal of some point where we would gap up in the morning and then sell off or gap down in the in the morning and then buy it up and every single day was essentially a reversal and so you can see that here in this chart ch chart we've just had lots and lots of whipping back and forth so i'm not sure we're getting good data here and with the diamond stuck in a consolidation it's pretty hard to to really ferret out um, great 
uh, momentum um, at the moment using this indicator. Let's take a look at our um, economic calendar for today. And our economic calendar, well, it's a pretty light day today, but oh my goodness, do we have a busy week ahead of us. As you can see, we've got bond auctions here, the three and six month auctions to be paying attention to. And bonds are moving around here a bit this morning, um, just with the ant anticipation of what we have coming here on Tuesday. Before the market opens, we're going to have a CPI report. Now, something about the CPI report we're going to have to keep our eyes on. If you guys remember the the um, the employment situation number um, that came in uh, the first Friday of this month and that CPI number or employment situation number was way out of whack. I, I mean hugely out of whack. Well a lot of that is because of the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, the BLS, um, put in a big seasonal adjustment into that number um, on employment. So we we want to remember that the BLS also um, takes care of the CPI number and the BLS is also going to be including pretty significant um, seasonal adjustment into that number. They do this every January and we'll want to watch that closely. Now, the question is going to be, will that be in the favor of the bulls or in favor of the bears tomorrow morning? And um, I think that's the uncertainty facing this number on Tuesday. So you'll want to keep a pretty close eye on that. I, I suspect all eyes are going to be watching that number and how that reading comes out. And we could expect some big price moves in our indexes as a result. Now, if that were it for the week, we might be able to say, hey, we're going, depending on how that number comes out, we're going to have a bullish week or a bearish week. But that's certainly not the case. You'll want to notice here we've got retail sales on Wednesday. That is a big market moving number, along with Empire State Manufacturing, Industrial Production, Business Inventories, Housing Market Index, and then, of course, that Petroleum Status and Treasury International. And then if we just move right on through here, we're going to have um, housing starts and permits, claims, the Philly Fed, and the final PPI. So um, all of these are very big market moving events and we can expect a pretty volatile week and then we can get a little bit of a rest here on Friday with just um, import export prices coming in uh, to move us around on Friday. So middle part of this week, it's going to be exciting with a lot of data. And um, fortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at this, we also have a big week of earnings. Now today, a little bit lighter on that earnings report. I'll cover a couple of them here that we'll want to be paying attention to. And then um, um, if you want to catch the full list of notables, then I um, would suggest you um, click the link just below the title of the video that'll take you back to the morning blog so a couple things we'll want to keep an eye on um, advanced auto parts um, will be reporting looks like we're getting a little bit of gap down and bullish move here in that chart um, AAP has been in this ugly downtrend looks like it's trying to base here just a little bit so that'll be an important report to see whether we can move on we're going to hear from Denny's today um, we're going to hear from um, PLTR today and we're going to hear from uh, VNO and once again uh, make sure you click the link um, just below the title of the video if you want to catch that full list of notables but because I'm running long here today, how about we take a look at a few stocks setting up. If you guys could do me that quick favor, however, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, make sure you click that subscribe button. Click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. Make sure you click that um, thumbs up button and leave a brief comment. It's the engagement with the video that helps the channel to continue to grow. Thank you so much for those of you who do that. And thank you for those that share this video out on your social media feed and those who have been so kind in supporting the channel through the buy me a coffee link that's just right below the title of the video thank you so much everyone i do truly appreciate it let's take a peek at some stocks that could be setting up for today and keep in mind guys these are not recommendations
options to buy or sell any security. As a matter of fact, you're going to have to do your own due diligence and be really, really careful. Um, you never want to blindly follow someone else's trade idea, and particularly with the data coming our way, I think anything is possible. So plan your risk very, very carefully. One of the places that I've been mentioning here just recently is the US dollar. Look at the volatility that we're seeing in the dollar this morning. There's quite a little bit of volatility happening over there in the Bank of Japan. Um, and that's probably aiding in this um, volatile move that we're seeing here in the pre-market. Watch that carefully here. If the dollar strengthens, we would typically see the market overall market weaken. So um, with that uncertainty of that CPI, we could see a lot of uncertainty in the currency markets today. We could see quite a little bit of volatility in the bond um, markets today. So watch that closely. Now that's gonna, going to have an equal and opposite reaction probably with gold here today. Gold and silver, um, any of the precious metals and commodities will have negative impacts if we see the dollar increasing. Um, the opposite is true. If that dollar weakens as the day goes on, then we could see those precious metals and commodity prices move to the upside. So keep an eye on that. I still think gold is worth paying attention to. We've pulled back pretty substantially. Notice we've got quite a little bit of price support in that chart. If that can hold in here, then I would look for that opportunity that we could resume the uptrend. However, if this fails this area here, then we could be looking for more downside here in gold. And I'm going to have to say the same for silver. We're, we'll want to keep an eye on that. And we've seen um, um, commodity type and materials uh, type stocks that have been extremely bullish getting a pretty substantial pullback here so maybe we're running into some of that overbought condition in some of these areas we'll want to watch that closely and they're again they're going to be very very tied to what goes on in um, currencies and bonds. Now speaking of bonds, take a look at this TLT and TLT is a, a chart that I've been paying attention to and I hold a position in but I got to tell you I'm starting to get a little bit uncomfortable here. I was wanting this consolidation to rest up here over toward trend. You can notice right in here that we're pushing down into that trend on that weekly and I'm going to have to make some decisions on this if we fail here below that area. Now I do have this trade hedged but that would be a problem if if the market um, gets a good CPI number and shows bullishness, then we could likely see those bond yields fall. And then I would see TLT move back up. So keep a close eye on that. I have a little bias on here, obviously, because I'm holding, but you'll want to keep an eye on that. Other places, take a look at stocks like, um, um, whoops, um, F cell, F cell. My goodness, this thing was looking like it was going to have an opportunity to break through and hold support. And I mentioned this last week, and so I wanted to bring this up here today. And then noticing that we've broken down through these support levels um, and broken this upside trend, I think um, we still have a lot of challenging price action here in these green energies. So watch those pretty carefully. Not looking so so perky here at the moment here in F cell. Take a look at some of the other commodity type things out there like CCJ with um, Japan. Uh, Japan, excuse me, China announcing that they're going to build a lot of um, nuclear power here going forward. Um, taking a look at some of these uranium plays, a lot of strength showing up here in uranium. Uh, keep a close eye on that. And as we talk about energy, well, I think we're going to have to continue to keep an eye here on some of these um, oil related stocks. Um, some of the the refiners here um, could be a, of interest. Notice that they pushed down pretty hard last Thursday and tried to reverse it on Friday. So Halliburton still moving in this downside trend here, trying to find some price support in that chart. But this is going to be a big story about what happens or the strength of the recovery of China, because that's going to have that impact here on um, oil prices um, moving forward. And remember, we typically see the high point of oil prices or gasoline prices be or being right around Memorial Day. So, you know, that's a, that's a ways out here. We've got a couple of months 
um, on that. So we'll want to keep a close eye on this as that Memorial Day approaches. If this continues to um, to move up on a seasonal basis, like we typically see, then I would watch things like Halliburton, uh, Slumberjay, uh, noticing Slumberjay is showing lots and lots of bullishness here. And then just even um, just the oil sector stocks themselves, they had a really good rally here on Friday, breaking higher, made that little tiny higher low in there, pushing back up. Still a lot of uncertainty in here, but we'll want to keep an eye on those oil prices here. Um, again, that could have a bad effect on in inflation if we see those gas prices moving back up. So watch that closely. And we also have to add in that complication that uh, the president's going to soon have to start buying up oil in competition with the consumer out there to refill the strategic reserve. So keep an eye on um, energy. So with that, guys, hey, I'm going to wind this up for today because I'm getting a little bit long winded. Um, I want to wish you guys all a fantastic day. Thanks so much for being here today. Today. I truly appreciate it. And we'll see you right back here bright and early Tuesday morning for that CPI number. Wish you all the best.